Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Rainbow Six Siege in 2023. So we're going to look to optimize your windows and after that we're going to talk about the API and we're going to uh, close with the in-game setting. So now the best setting for windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they are pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So before launching the game, uh, we're going to press play. You have two different API on Rainbow Six Siege. The first one is DirectX 11 and the other one is Vulkan. Vulkan will be, be more like GPU bound and DirectX 11 will be more CPU bound. So I really recommend do some testing because it really depends on your system, which one will perform better. But I want to mention in Vulkan, you can use the Reflex from NVIDIA and also you can use DLSS. So if you want to use those technology, you will need to boot your game in Vulkan. So in my case, I want to use Reflex so that's why I'm going to boot in Vulcan. So now inside of the game, so make sure that first of all, you have your proper monitor over there. Make sure that you're using the native resolution of your monitor. Don't downscale your resolution over there. Your game will look blurry. Display mode, for, uh, very important to play full screen. Don't use any other mode. Refresh rate, I recommend to uh, use the maximum refresh rate that your uh, monitor is capable of. Aspect ratio is question of preference. I play 16 by 9. So depending on how you want to play 4 by 3, 16 by 10, 16 by 9, it's up to you. VSync, I really recommend to disactivate it. Uh, VSync will add input lag in your game. So a game like Rainbow Six Siege is very important. So uh, removing it or use another technology like uh, FreeSync or G-Sync uh, to synchronize your monitor with your GPU. Uh, I don't limit my FPS again because I want the lowest input lag. If you, you're playing on a laptop or a, or a desktop that you really struggle with your thermal, don't go too crazy. Maybe limit your FPS with the amount of Earth because sometimes you will create throttling and more problems. So you're going to have like some random drop because you have issue with thermals on your CPU or GPU. So it's really a question of do you have good thermals or not. For field of view, it's question of preference or so whatever, just put uh, what you, you want. But you need to uh, remember that an higher field of view, you will uh, lose some FPS. So definitely look at this if you're playing with an integrated GPU. Don't go too crazy with your FOV. After that, for the graphics, so I boot in Vulkan, so I have the Reflex, uh, low latency, so I'm using it at on. After that, texture quality and texture filtering, you can max it out if you have 6 gig of VRAM and more. And also, you have an indicator over there. Just make sure that you have 10% empty uh, when you change your graphic parameter uh, because you need to, to give like Windows and maybe if you have a second screen, uh, a little bit of juice. After that, LOD go with low. You can expect a nice 10% boost over there. Shading go with low again. A nice 5% boost. The goal here is to have like a lot of FPS and to have the, a, a good visibility. So you don't want too much effect in your game. Shadow quality, this one is huge. If I do very high to low, you can expect 20% boost in your FPS. Reflection, I recommend to go with low. Not necessarily a huge boost in your FPS, but more like it will stabilize your FPS. When you see too, too much reflection, you can have like big drop in this game. So go with low. VFX, same thing with better visibility and also a lot more FPS, like something 12 to 15% boost over here. 
MDL inclusion, I recommend to go with off also. Your game will look very flat without MDL inclusion, but it's better for visibility and your FPS. Lens effect at off, you don't want any depth of field. DLSS, it's a question of preference. If you need FPS, you're playing on an old video card like a 2060, something like that. Definitely test it out. Quality is really good in this game, honestly. Uh, don't go at balance or performance. It will be uh, too blurry. And also, if, even if your video card is uh, faster than, I don't know, the 2060, something like that, look at the DLSS because sometimes the sharpening is really good and you can like see enemies properly. So it's a question of preference. If you don't use the DLSS, I recommend to just deactivate the anti-aliasing because anti-aliasing in this game is pretty trash. Uh, everything looks blurry, uh, so that's why I recommend to go with off, and also you will gain a couple of FPS. I'm not a huge fan of FSR 1.0 also. Uh, everything looks blurry when you're moving. I hope they're gonna patch it and maybe update it for the 2.0 version, but the 1 is not very good for now. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my Rainbow Six Siege guide in 2023. If you have any question, just come in, in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.